I've got two nice problems from an Estonian math contest today that both have to do with perfect squares. Although, other than that, they're a little bit unrelated, but I think they're both interesting in their own right. So let's look at this first one. We want to set t sub n equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to n. So in other words, this is the nth triangular number. And what we want to do is prove that if 2 times t sub m is equal to t sub n, so in other words, twice the mth triangular number is equal to the nth triangle, triangular number, then t sub 2m minus n is a perfect square. Okay, so let's get to it. So a bunch of you guys probably already know the closed form for a triangular number, but maybe we'll just derive it really quickly just for the sake of completeness. So let's take t sub n and we'll write it as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to n minus 1 and then n. And then we'll take another copy of t sub n and we'll just reverse the order of this addition. So this is gonna be n plus n minus one plus all the way down to two plus one. That's as simple as just using the commutative rule for addition. Next, we'll just add these two equations. So over here on the left, we'll have two tn, and then on the right, we'll have n plus one plus n plus one all the way up and then n plus one at the end. That's because here we have one plus n, two plus n minus one, then notice those also add up to n plus one. But the real question here is how many n plus ones do we have? Well, it's pretty easy to see that we have n total terms. That's because they're just counted right up here in the expression for t sub n. So that means this adds up to n times n plus one, which means we can easily divide by two, and that gives us this nth triangular number is n times n plus one over two. Okay, nice. So now let's keep that in mind, and now we'll use this formula along with this given that two tm equals tn to get some sort of relationship between tm and tn. So let's see what we've got. So like I said, we have 2tm equals tn, but that means that m times m plus 1 over 2 times 2, so that's going to cancel, equals n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so now maybe we would like to get rid of this 2 in the denominator. We can do that by multiplying up to the other side, and simultaneously we'll distribute everything through. That'll give us 2m squared plus 2m equals n squared plus n. Now, maybe we'll just hang on to that expression for the relationship between m and n for now, and we'll move on to the next step. But we don't really have much room, so we'll get rid of this and do that. So on the last board, along with deriving a closed form for a triangular number, we got the following relationship between m and n. Now, next up, we're ready to look at this triangular number, t, 2m minus n, and see, well, why is it a perfect square? So let's do that. So t sub 2m minus n, so that's gonna be 2m minus n times 2m minus n plus one, all over two. Now we'd like to multiply that numerator out and then refactor it as a perfect square or after dividing by two, along the way using this kind of relationship between m and n. So let's maybe get to it. The nice way to multiply this out is to think about this term over here as being grouped. That'll just save us some time. So notice that's gonna give us 2m minus n quantity squared plus 2m minus n all over 2. And so we get that from distributing this onto both of those. Okay, so now squaring out this guy right here will give us 4m squared minus 4mn plus n squared, and then we still have a plus 2m minus n all over 2, like that. 
Now we look at this expression in the numerator and notice that it's very difficult to think about factoring this as some sort of perfect square because we have quadratic terms and linear terms. Notice we've got m squared, 4mn, and n squared are all quadratic terms, whereas 2m and n are both linear terms. And so it would be nice if we had the ability to rewrite those linear terms as quadratic terms. But the expression that allows us to do that, we built on the last board. So notice that we can take this expression, which we derived before, and rewrite it so that we see that 2m minus n, so that's by moving this n over, is going to be the same thing as n squared minus 2m squared. So that allows us to take this chunk right here, which is a chunk of linear terms, and rewrite them as quadratic terms. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. We can take this and re-express it as n squared minus 2m squared. Then let's see what happens after we do some simplification. So we have 4m squared minus 2m squared. That gives us 2m squared. We have minus 4mn. Then we have n squared plus n squared. That's going to be 2n squared. And this is still all over 2. Next, we can see that everything is even in the numerator, so we can factor a 2 out and cancel it with the 2 in the denominator. That leaves us with m squared minus 2mn plus n squared. But that's clearly a perfect square binomial. It's pretty easy to check that that is equal to m minus n quantity squared, which is a perfect square. So that finishes off this first problem. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at the second one. Okay, so we finished this first one off. Now we're ready to look at this second one. Let's see what it says. So we want to suppose that we have an even number A such that it may be paired with a positive integer which is strictly bigger than 1 such that A to the n minus 1 over A minus 1 is a perfect square. Then we want to use that to show that a must be a multiple of 8. So the evenness implies that it's a multiple of 8, along with this condition right here. Okay, so let's jump into it. So the first thing that we'll do is use the evenness of a to write it as 2 times some other number. So we'll take a and write it as 2 times b for some natural number b, like that. Now we want to break this into a couple of cases. Maybe we could intuitively think about this as testing the simplest case first and then moving on to the next cases. But as we'll see, something different is happening with the n equals 2 case. And we don't know what n is, we just know that some n exists. So that means we have to look at the n equals 2 case along with all of the other cases. So let's maybe do that first. So we have case number one, which is n equals 2. Okay, so we know that 2b squared minus 1 over 2b minus 1 is a perfect square. So I'll just put a square there to say that it's a perfect square. Next up, we can just use a difference of squares to factor this numerator as 2b minus 1 times 2b plus 1. And then we still have a 2b minus 1 in the denominator. So that cancels. Then next, we see that the left-hand side is odd. That means the right-hand side also has to be odd. But the right-hand side is a perfect square. So we can express it as an odd perfect square. I'll write that as 2k plus 1 quantity square for some natural number k. Okay, nice. Now let's see what condition that puts on B. So let's rewrite this, keeping all that we need, which is 2B plus 1 equals 2K plus 1 quantity squared. So that means we have 2B plus 1 equals 4K squared plus 4K and then plus 1. Now we can cancel a 1 from both sides of the equation and divide by 2, leaving us with b equals 2k squared plus 2k. Now we can factor that right-hand side a little bit and see that this is equal to 2 times k times k plus 1. 
But then next, we see that exactly one of k or k plus one is even. So that means that k times k plus one is most definitely even. But the fact that k times k plus one is even means that it's a multiple of two, which means this entire thing over here is a multiple of four when we take this extra two into account. So notice if we have b is a multiple of four, we can write b as four times c, and then interjecting that into our original equation for a, we see that that means that a is equal to eight times c. In other words, a is a multiple of c, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at the second case when n is bigger than or equal to three. Now we're ready to look at our next case, so I'll call that case number two, and that is when n is bigger than or equal to three. So let's just see what we can do there. So now we have two b to the n minus one all over two b minus one. And then again, doing some division, although it's a little bit trickier this time, but it's also a well-known formula. We see that that is gonna be two b to the n minus one plus all the way down to two b cubed plus 2b squared plus 2b plus 1. Again, we know that n is bigger than or equal to 3, so perhaps all of this is an empty sum. Notice that all of that is also a multiple of 8. We can pull that apart if we need to. Notice we have a 2 cubed here, which is a multiple of 8, so here we have that this is equal to 8, and then we'll have 2 to the n minus four times b to the n minus one, all the way down to b cubed. Okay, so all that's left to show is that the leftover stuff is a multiple of eight. So we'll write that here, need, this is a multiple of eight. But we know that the entire thing is a perfect square so we actually want to look at what are the possible remainders of perfect squares after dividing by 8. And we're going to do this by a little lemma. So, and that is that all odd squares are of the form 8 times k plus 1. We can do a little proof of this. It's not too hard to check. We can look at the two odd perfect squares, 4m plus 1 squared versus 4n plus 3 squared. So notice that all odd squares will be one of these types. You either have a remainder of 1 or 3 after dividing by 4. But multiplying this out, we see that we get 16m squared plus 8m plus 1. But notice, all of this is a multiple of eight, so that's of the form 8k plus one. But here we get 16n squared plus 24n plus nine, but I'm gonna write that as plus eight plus one. Now all of this stuff here is a multiple of eight, so that means we have a square of the form 8k plus one here as well. Okay, let's get rid of this lemma and then we'll finish it off. So now we're almost done. We determined that this stuff that is overlined in purple is a multiple of eight. So we just need to check that this stuff underlined in orange is also a multiple of eight. The whole thing is a perfect square and odd perfect squares are always of the form eight K plus one. So we'll take advantage of that. So that tells us that this two B quantity squared plus two B plus one is of the form 8k plus one. And you might say, well, actually this entire thing is of the form 8k plus one because it's an odd perfect square. But what we can do is take this multiple of eight and just move it to the other side of the equation and then absorb it into this multiple of eight. Okay, so now let's see some simplification that can occur. So notice that we can cancel out this one right here with this one right here and then multiply some things out here. So we have 4b squared plus 2b 
equals eight times K. But now we can factor a two and a B out of this left-hand side. That'll give us two B. And then next we'll be left with two B plus one equals eight times K. But let's see what we've got. We can divide both sides by two. That gives us B times 2b plus 1, but notice the important thing here is that that is an odd number, equals 4 times k. So that tells us that b is a multiple of 4. In other words, we can write b as 4 times c for some natural number c. Now we can finish this off by plugging this value of b up here, and that's going to leave us with a equals eight times c. In other words, a is a multiple of eight, just like we need. And that's a good place to stop.